Now you're probably thinking, what the hell am I doing? I've just broken a smartwatch. However, I haven't, because this is the Amazfit Stratos and it is waterproof. <laughs> See, look, it's working and it looks way bigger. Oh God, that tastes, no, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so this is my review of the Amazfit Stratos smartwatch. My name is Dan, I love gadgets, let's go. Right, so yes, this is the Amazfit Stratos, which is now dripping water everywhere. It's the second generation smartwatch from this brand. It's the sequel to the Amazfit Pace, which I also have here. Um, and this was a very good smartwatch. It's very well received, very well reviewed. So this is the sequel to that watch, the Amazfit Stratos, and it basically retains many similar features um, with a few upgrades and a complete overhaul in um, how it looks and how it's designed. So um, I'm gonna go through the design, the specs, what it can do, what I think is good at, what I think is bad at, and then we'll see what we think at the end, whether it's worth buying, whether it's worth upgrading. I've had it for about three weeks now and I've been wearing it constantly for like at least a week. So let's just go through the specs of this watch very quickly, uh, what it can do, what's inside, what uh, sensors it has, etc. It has a 1.34 inch uh, LCD reflective screen with a resolution of 300 by 200 pixels. It's got 512 megabytes of RAM um, in order to run the software and it also has four gigabytes of internal memory so you can, you can put some music on here. It has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and GPS. It has a heart rate sensor, it has a accelerometer, it has a pedometer, it has a barometer, it has a compass, and it has a gyroscope. So um, yeah, it's got a lot of sensors in just this little tiny little thing here. So uh, yeah, it can track a lot of things. It can track your steps, it can track your sleep, it can track your movements, it can track your speed, it can track your heart rate. So the Stratos also provides smartphone notifications. So whenever you get like a WhatsApp, if you, someone's calling you, a text message, even like Instagram, Facebook, if you want. And if I hadn't already made it clear enough, it is waterproof. Like I say, you can pretty much submerge it up to 50 meters and it will be absolutely fine. So you can go swimming with it. You can uh, take it in the shower. This is good for swimmers who want to track their swims, who want to track, um, you know, their how far they're going, how fast they're going. So here it is, it's a bit wet because I just put it in that glass of water, but it usually won't be wet. It's a fairly thick watch. Um, I think it's one of the thickest watches I've ever owned. I think it looks great. Um, I think it's a much more classic design, like a much more standard kind of sports watch design compared to its predecessor, which did look very much like a piece of technology. This could kind of get away with looking like just a, uh, normal watch really if you didn't look twice. It has these manual controls which don't really do that much. I mean you can make selections on the screen and you can you know select things but you can just do that with a touch screen anyway. I'm pretty sure they're just there mostly for aesthetic purposes. The strap is just a silicon strap. It's replaceable so you can get a leather strap if you but the main attraction is the screen really. I mean it does look good. There are so many different watch faces so this is just one watch face but it's very responsive, it's very uh, bright, and it's easy to read everything on the screen. So, uh, you know, you won't be difficult to read even small text. So as you can see, the screen is very responsive, just as good as any smartphone, and um, yeah, the screen does look great. It's about 50 millimeters thick, which is very thick for a watch, really. Um, if you are used to thick watches, then that's fine. I tend to go for thinner watches, because I have a thin wrist and yeah, it kind of uh, is quite bulky compared to my wrist. And I thought this was going to be too, way too thick at first when I first opened it and first put it on. And to be honest, it did take a few days for me to get used to it. But once I did get used to it, I mean, I don't really notice it anymore. But it will definitely suit those with thicker wrists better. It will definitely be more comfortable if you have a thicker wrist. And yeah, you may just need a few days to get used to it, especially if you're going to sleep with the watch on. I certainly struggle with the first few days to have this um, attached to my wrist the whole time. As you can see, it is. Compared with the Amazfit Pace, I mean, it's only slightly thicker, but I thought the Amazfit Pace was pretty thick to start off with. So this really is the upper limit of what I could handle. The watch is really easy to control and it has a few cool features which makes it even more user friendly. For example, if you just want to see the time, you just don't care about anything else, uh, you just want to know what time it is. If you lift your wrist up like that, uh, the backlight will automatically activate so you, in a darker environment you'll be able to see the watch face very clearly. But if you want to use the watch's other features, then all you need to do is just click the uh, top manual control and the flashlight will, the backlight will turn on again. And then you can just swipe through any of the 14 different screens that the, the watch has. And each of these is a different kind of function. So there's anything from the heart rate monitor to a compass to an alarm, music, uh, what else do we have? Sleep, 
a weather forecast, which I find really useful actually. The weather forecast has been the thing that I use the most. Basically each screen gives you just a little bit of information about what you want to see. So the heart rate just shows you the last heart rate. The music just shows you what music you last played. The, the alarm shows you what your alarm is right now. But if you want more information or you want to change the settings or you need more detailed information, you just tap on the screen once wherever your screen you are and then it will take you to a different menu where you can see more information. So for example, if you go to the heart rate uh, monitor screen, then you just tap on the screen. Then there you go, it has more information. So it says what your average heart rate is, your resting heart rate, and you can see uh, kind of what activities you've been doing. So there is actually a lot of data to visualize just on the watch itself. You don't necessarily need to use the app. Uh, I mean, using the app is better and using the app does give you even more information. But compared to things like the smart bands, which don't really have a screen, they only give you very basic information, you can see a lot on this smartwatch straight away. You don't need to uh, go into the phone and go into the app. So I like looking at that kind of stuff, a bit of a geek in that way. I like looking at, you know, what my heart rate's been doing all day or um, how much deep sleep did I get last night or how much deep sleep did I get three nights ago? Um, why am I so tired today? Oh, it's because I had 20 minutes of deep sleep. <sighs> But yeah, all of that is just available on the watch and you can just, you know, if you're curious, just have a look. And I like that all that information is right there on the watch straight away. Right, next, on to tracking. Tracking is probably one of the most important things if you want a smartwatch, especially if you are sporty. If you are looking for a sports smartwatch, smart tracker kind of thing, um, then certainly this is one of the best brands to get. Amaze Fit, hence, you know, clue is in the name, it's Fit. I mean, I'm not that fit and I don't really use it for sport, but it's kind of what it's designed to do. So for each of these kind of different activities from say jogging, running, climbing, uh, I think they even have things like CrossFit, all that kind of stuff. It has uh, pre-programmed tracking abilities in the watch. So you just select whatever activity you're doing and it will know what it needs to uh, track. It will give you data on like how you're improving, if you're getting any better, if you're getting worse. So uh, it's very good for if you have a specific sport you want to track then this watch will be able to do that for you. But even if you're not interested in sport, even if you just don't want to generally track your activity on a day-to-day -day basis like a normal person, you don't do anything that's you know sporty, it's still very, very useful. Um, for example, it's, it counts your steps. So if you're interested in how many steps you do, this has a pedometer and a GPS. So it will show you on a map where you've been. It will show you how far you've gone. You'll be able to track exactly how many steps you do, you've done. And it also shows your steps just on the main screen. So for example, today I've done 813 which is pathetic. Yeah, usually uh, I have a target of 8,000 and I do that once every three weeks or something. It also has a, a sedentary like alert. So if you've been sat down for too long, then it will vibrate and tell you to get off your ass. Um, I usually just completely ignore that. But if you are someone who wants that reminder, if you work in an office and you know you need to get up every, I think it's every hour and a half or something, um, to move about a bit, then this watch will remind you to do so. As well as monitoring your activity, it also measures your inactivity through a very, very good sleep tracker. You know you can get ones on your phone and you're supposed to put it next to your bed and then it measures how good your sleep is and it tells you when to wake up and like how, how much deep sleep you had, all this kind of stuff. I find the phone ones really bad, like they don't really do anything. I think they get it wrong most of the time. But because this is literally on your wrist um, and it has all these pedometers uh, and a accelerometer and a gyroscope, it literally knows when you're moving and when you're not. So uh, yeah, it's very accurate. For example, today it told me that I had one hour of deep sleep and I really, really feel like I've had one hour of deep sleep because I am very tired and my eyes are like grey underneath where I've basically. That's why I'm wearing glasses so you can't see them. So the sleep monitor is very good and it tells you exactly how long you were asleep for, if you woke up, how long you were awake for, um, how much light sleep you've had and how much deep sleep you've had. And it shows you straight from the watch or you can go into more detail on the app, which I'll talk about in a minute. Actually, you know, I'll talk about it now because I've just realized I've run out of things to talk about. The app is just called the Amazfit app. Yeah, search for it on the Play Store or the App Store and it will just be there. And you need to use that to really, for this to work. This, the, the watch won't work unless you connect it to the Amazfit app. It collates all the data that the watch is collecting. And yeah, it will display it in a much more kind of broad uh, sense and a much more user-friendly manner. Even though I said that a lot of the information is just on the watch itself, if you use the app, you can see historic data, you can see graphs and trends, stuff, and you really wanna, wanna track the intricacies of your health, of your, um, of your activities. The app will do a very good job of showing you that um, in a daily, weekly, even hourly basis. The app has been like super good for me so far. I mean, it's never crashed. Um, it's never lost the connection with the watch. And yeah, it's just been very user-friendly. I mean, compared to some other uh, softwares like the Fitbit and uh, maybe the Mi, Mi Fit, I think it's called, um, it doesn't give you as much data straight from the off, like straight from the first screen. It's definitely meant for you to kind of explore and go into depth of what you need to do. So it may take you a few days just to see 
all of the different features it has and find all the different keys and all the different buttons and all the different um, you know uh, tables and stuff that you can show you but after you've done that I think it's worth exploring so I think that's about it to be honest um, uh, that's pretty much the Amazfit Stratos in a nutshell well let's ask the question is it worth buying for a start there are other watches out there for example the Amazfit Pace is still really good and it basically has the same specifications as the Stratos apart from the fact it's not waterproof and it doesn't have this Android Pay feature and it's got a different uh, design. Prefer, I guess it will depend what design you prefer. If you want a waterproof watch that has touchscreen, heart rate monitor, all this kind of tracking stuff, then this is basically one of the only ones that are out right now. I mean, if you're a swimmer, surfer, skier, snowboarder, and you want all of those features, but you don't want your watch to be destroyed in water, then yeah, this is the perfect watch because it has all these features and it won't, uh, and it, well, and it can survive in water. For everyone else, if you are into sports, if you're into tracking, stuff like that, then this is also an amazing brand. It's also an amazing watch. Um, it, like I say, the tracking features work very well. They, they're they not always accurate. For example, the heart rate monitor, you really need it to be very tight and you need it to be very high up on your wrist for the heart rate monitor to be super accurate. It's as good as any other more expensive smartwatch, for example, Apple and uh, Samsung. I truly think with those smartwatches, you're paying for the name. A smartwatch is a smartwatch. If it can track your, if it has GPS, if it has a touch screen, then it's basically like just like any other one. Uh, so yeah, I'm of the opinion that this is much more better value than the Samsung watches or the, the Apple watches. So if you like a big watch, a big thick watch, and you'd like it to be waterproof and have as many tracking features as possible, then yeah, I would definitely recommend this watch. Um, it's slightly more expensive than the Pace. If you want a cheaper watch and you don't care about waterproof, then go for the pace because it's essentially the same, just looks a bit different, doesn't have waterproof. I've really enjoyed using this watch and I'm probably gonna keep it on my wrist for the foreseeable future. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, do let me know because I will be happy to answer them. I've also, there's also a full written review of this. If you wanna see more specs, if you wanna see more uh, kind of information on this watch, then check the description below. There's a link to a written review and you can read that for more information. If you like gadgets, then subscribe to this channel because I have more coming, um, for example, this, for example, this, for example, uh, I can't see any more, but there are more. I think they're in the post. There's more in the post coming. Okay, that's it, I guess. Bye.